So let's talk about Disney and Pixar's Coco, which is celebrating its fifth anniversary this year. Big days! Entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings my fellow YouTubers and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Dual, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 2017 computer animated fantasy film Coco from Disney and Pixar, based on an idea by Lee Unkrich, which he who directed this and co-directed by Adrian Molina. The film features a pretty good voice acting cast that includes Anthony Gonzalez, Gail Garcia Bernal, Benjamin Brad, Alana Obak, Renee Victor, Ana Ophelia Moguera, and Edward James Olmos. The story follows a 12 year old boy named Miguel who is accidentally transported to the land of the dead, where he seeks the help of his deceased musician great great grandfather to return to his family among the living. To reverse his family's ban on music. This film was a big success, another big success for them, and of course it was inspired by the Mexican holiday Dia de los Muertos, that of course better known to you, us as Day of the Dead. Of course that's why it is in Spanish. <laughs> okay, enough said. This was also the first film with a nine-figure budget to feature an all-Latino principal cast. Yeah. And won the Academy Award for Best Anime Feature at the Academy Awards. Here's the story. In the Mexican town of Santa Cecilia, a young woman named Imelda marries a man who eventually leaves her and her daughter Coco to pursue a music career. When he never returns, Imelda banishes music from her family forever and starts a shoemaking business. Several years later, Imelda's great-great-grandson, Miguel, now lives with the elderly Coco and their family, including Miguel's parents and his grandmother, who are also shoemakers. Despite his family's music band, Miguel secretly idolizes the deceased musician Ernesto de la Cruz and teaches himself to play guitar by watching Ernesto's old films. On the Day of the Dead, Miguel inadvertently bumps into the family a friend, uh, breaking a frame containing a photo of Imelda and an infant, Coco. He discovers a hidden section of the photograph shows his great-great-grandfather, whose head has been torn from the photo, holding Ernesto's famous guitar. Believing this proves Ernesto is his relative, Miguel tells his family he will become a musician. But after Miguel's grandmother destroys the guitar, Miguel breaks into Ernesto's mausoleum and takes Ernesto's guitar to use in a local town competition. Once Miguel strums it, he becomes invisible to all living people. However, he can interact with his skeletal dead relatives who are visiting from the land of the dead for the holiday. Taking him back with them, they learn that Amilda cannot visit since Miguel inadvertently removed her photo from the ofrenda. Miguel also discovers that stealing Ernesto's guitar caused him to be cursed. He must have a family blessing to return to the land of the living before sunrise or he will die. Imelda offers him a blessing on the condition he abandons music, but Miguel decides to seek Ernesto's blessing instead. He encounters a homeless skeleton named Hector who offers to help Miguel get to Ernesto, provided Miguel takes Hector's photo to the land of the living and puts it on an ofrenda. Otherwise, Hector will never get to visit his daughter and will eventually disappear as one of the forgotten. Hector helps Miguel enter a talent competition to win entry to Ernesto's mansion, but Miguel's family tracks him down, forcing him to flee again. Miguel sneaks into the mansion, where a surprise Ernesto welcomes him as his descendant. Hector arrives, again imploring Miguel to put up his photo. Ernesto and Hector, who once performed together, begin to argue. Miguel learns that when Hector wanted to break up the act and return home, Ernesto, who could not write songs himself, poisoned Hector and stole his guitar and songs, passing them off as his own. 
to protect his legacy, Ernesto seizes Hector's photo and has Miguel and Hector thrown into a synopsis pit. There, Miguel discovers that Coco's father and Imelda's lost husband is Hector, not Ernesto. Yes. Now, to the final act in the ending. As always, you know the procedure. You have five seconds to stop this video, go to the description box below, and fast forward to the time below. If you've seen the movie already, please continue once the five seconds are over. Thank you, and here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Rescued by his family, Miguel reveals the truth about Hector's death. Imelda and Hector reconcile, and the family infiltrates Ernesto's concert to retrieve Hector's photo. Ernesto's crimes are exposed to the audience, and Imelda's abrogate Pepita attacks Ernesto, causing a giant bell to fall on him. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that the animal's name, so sorry. In the chaos, Hector's photograph is lost. As the sun rises, Coco's memory of Hector fades. Imelda and a fading Hector quickly bless Miguel, who returns home. After Miguel plays Remember Me on Hector's guitar, Coco brands and sings along with him. She reveals that she had saved the torn-off piece of the family photo with Hector's face on it. Then tells her family stories about her father, thus saving his memory as well as his existence in the land of the dead. Miguel's family reconciles with him, ending the ban on music. When your Leo Coco's collected letters from Hector prove that Ernesto stole his songs, allowing Hector to be rightfully honored in Ernesto's place. Miguel shows the family of Frinda to his new baby sister, Socorro. The Frinda now contains Hector and a recently deceased Coco. In the land of the dead, Hector and a male the rekindle their romance, join Coco and the rest of their family for a visit to the living. And Miguel sings and plays for his relatives, both living and dead. End of story. So what did I think of Coco? Well, though I've only seen it a few times, but I will tell you it is a very colorful masterpiece. And I will tell you that I absolutely think it's it's an amazing film. Anyway. Let me see. And this film got a ton of good reviews and I'll have you. Ryan Tomeo says its rich visual pleasures are matched by a thoughtful narrative that takes a family-friendly and deeply affecting approach to questions of culture, family, life, and death. Yes, I do agree. Couldn't agree more. Yes, the story is absolutely incredible and amazing. The score from Michael Giacchino, I miss if I mispronounce that, I do apologize, was good too. Leon Grich's direction for the film was really good. And also our voice acting cast was good. We have Anthony Gonzalez voicing Miguel. Gail Garcia Bernal voices Hector. He also reprises this, this role for the special Spanish-language Spanish dubbing of the movie. Benjamin Brad voices Ernesto. And Antonio Sol does his singing voice. Alain Bach voices Mama Amilda. I remember, I know who Alana Bach is. I know her from seeing her in uh, Meet the Fockers and, let's see, and the Brave Bunch movie. And I know she was Josie on the first season of Beekman's World. Renee Victor played voices Abuelita. And Ana Ophelia Borgia voices Mama Coco. Edward James almost voices. Shikaran, if I, I mispronounce it, I apologize. That's a friend of Hector's. And it has a host of others. Uh, 
some that have been heard in would be re that recently were heard in other Disney or Disney Pixar films like Cheech Marin, John Ratzenberger. Yeah. Anyway, yes, I really do like the voice acting cast. So, anyway, Coco was a big success for Disney and Pixar. It won not just them um, at the Academy Awards. It's won numerous other accolades. The film went on to make eight hundred and seven million worldwide, and let me see here, and a, and will become the sixteenth highest grossing film, well, animated film ever at the time. So, anyway, Coco is just so. Amazing. Again, a great story, great characters, great voice acting, great story, everything. I have to give it credit. So overall, would I recommend Coco? I would say definitely yes. C. <laughs> Anyway, and I will consider Coco to be one of the the great films Disney and Pixar have given to us. I don't know where if this would be a top 10 or not, but we'll see. If I decide to finally rank all the Disney Pixar films so far, and I recently just saw the teaser for their next film coming up next year called Elemental. So if I do it before that, we'll see what happens. Stay tuned, okay? So anyway, what are your thoughts on Coco? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big V Nation. And join me next time when I bring to you a review of Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown, the third Peanuts film. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, check out my reviews for these other films. In the upper left-hand corner is my review for... Another, a recent Disney film with a little, well, Hispanic heritage and what have you in, and that was Encanto from last year. It's a spoiler-free review. Or go to the upper right-hand corner and see my review of this recent hit for Disney and Pixar, and that was Turning Red, which has a little musical-type feel to it. Or if you want something different, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my review of DreamWorks Legend of the Guardians. Not Legend, uh, Rise of the Guardians. I, well, that's a wrong Legend of the Guardians. That's a dire movie. My mistake, Rise of the Guardians, which recently celebrated its 10th anniversary. Now, I forgot to mention, today's the 5th anniversary for this film. It came out on this day, November 22nd, 2017. So, happy 5th anniversary to Coco. And finally, the bottom right in corners of the button, you can click to subscribe if you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc. Then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.